right? Uh, I'm telling you, I was in your shoes. I was in those mucklucks you wear to the titty bar. You need to do just a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit less of what you like to do and just a little bit more of the stuff that you try to avoid, and you'll change your life around. Can you do that? Sure can. All right. Did you say can't? Can. Okay. Sure can. Go ahead, Mike. Do that. Thank you. That's it. That's the key to life, everyone. And then don't blame anybody for anything. Just, just a right. little, just do a little more of what you don't like to do and a little less of what you like to do. And But don't worry, it'll pay off. One day you'll have more money, you can buy your own titty bar. Isn't, isn't it the blaming thing too, right? Don't, yeah, and don't, don't blame anyone else for anything. For anything. Yeah. Just, it's all up to you. Jody. Yeah. You're 23. Yep. <coughs> What's going on? Jesus, cold. Jody. Hello. Go right ahead. What's going on? We're asking you the same. Well, I was wanting to ask, like, every time I'm with my oh. girlfriend, I was wanting to, like, get some advice on some anal sex. It is a full moon tonight. No kidding, brother. <laughs> yeah? What do, you, what do you want to know? Well, I don't know how to ask her, and I haven't done it with her yet. And when we're having sex, I rub around on her and stuff. How and long has she like, been your girlfriend? Yeah. How long has she been your girlfriend? Three months. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Things going good in the relationship? Yeah, stuff's going pretty good. What's the hurry? Her name's Michelle. I can't do it. <laughs> Hold on a second, Jody. <laughs> i got to stop. Do a love line uh, recreation. First one was... Uh, How long with the girlfriend? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. How long has she been your girlfriend? Yeah. How long? Yeah. <laughs> Good. All right, what is the next one? How long have you been the girlfriend? Three months. Her name's Michelle. <laughs> What's the hurry? Her name's Michelle. All right, now stop making fun of this, Jody. Jody? Yeah. All right, I'm on your side, brother. That's good. Well, why don't you it's bring it up? Maybe somebody cares in the world. Maybe maybe she's dying to do it herself, and she's she she's just uh, she doesn't want to bring it up. Why well, don't I touch her there with my fingers, and she like. Don't say nothing, but when I try to do it, she starts screaming and yelling. And that, that, that would be that would be. A, you got to put a sock in her mouth. She's going to. That yell. would be an indication, Jody, that uh, it's not something she wants to do. All right. Yeah. But, yeah. She, she does not want to do it. When I touch her, there she wants me though. That's fine. She doesn't want you to do anything more than that. And you don't have any advice of how to go about trying to. Yeah, lay off her. Come on, like Jody. Spider. Jody. Yeah. She told you no, right? No, she don't ever, like, say no. She just, you said she was screaming at you and throwing crap at you. That's no Yeah, she said it hurts. This guy is an asshole. Yeah, she told you no, right? I mean, when she tells me, I stop. All right. Jesus Christ. I don't know if it's this radio on, or on. what the hell's going on back there. You know the thing that's ironic about the butt love? What? The guys who's you'd want least in your ass or the guys who are most enthusiastic about doing it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's certain guys I wouldn't mind getting in my ass. I really wouldn't. <laughs> i got to be honest with you. I wouldn't mind Drew in my ass. That would not be a, a big deal to me. But the ironic thing is Drew's not interested in that. That's right. Jody. Even if I were gay, I'm not interested. Jody, however, wants to put it in you. And I can see Jody sucking off a cider jug Wearing, I could see, Jody's the kind of guy to be wearing a uh, Civil War officer's cap. You know, the hat, the Confederate flag, and the tassels hanging off it. Yeah. Setting a cold cider jug down on your ass. Probably still wearing a pair of uh, boots. Be, uh, moonshine. <laughs> cider. Well, it's a cider jug. It's oh, got moonshine in it. Yeah, it's got the three X's on it. Right. And then later you play it like an instrument. And he pulls the cork out and spits it across the room with his teeth. Oh, Jesus Christ. It is true, though. The guys who most want to get in your ass are the guys you want there least. No, that, that's the title of your next book, isn't it? Yeah, that, that is going to be it. <laughs> All right, we'll take a little break. We'll be back. The phone number for Loveline is...
Hey, it's the Love Line. We're going to take our traditional 10-second top of the hour station identification, and we'll be back with more Love Line in a scant 10 seconds. This is Love Line on Radio Station. Broadcasters. 92.1 KFMA, Green Valley, Tucson. It is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew just got his head out of the corner. Kiss my ass. Oh, boy. Drew, uh, when Drew gets a page, he calls back before the last digit uh, appears, in, this appears in his pager. It's old habit. It's a horrible habit. You really see. You know why that was? I got in really bad shape that way is because uh, when I was really, really busy, if I got a page behind, I was screwed. Right. I mean, because the beep would go every three to five minutes, just constantly. So Drew will just stand up during the radio show and he'll return the page from the phone that's in the studio. And the thing that's always funny about it is he buries his head in the corner of the studio it's and talks acoustic, acoustic wall. into the wall. And I, uh, I'm sort of with you though. I don't. Uh, do you, I don't like. I can't have a phone conversation if there's other people in the room. Yeah. Can you do that? I'm worried that way too. But I, I'm actually trying to protect you and the microphones from my voice. Oh. I mean, it's not that I'm looking for privacy. I'm just trying to be quiet. Oh, that's good. Yeah. All right. You ready to go here? Yeah. What the hell were we talking about? Who knows? Stephen. Yeah. Uh, What's going on? You're 15. Yeah. You want to so, know if it's okay to date outside of your religion? Yeah. What's your religion? Uh, I'm a Christian. Yeah. And what's your girlfriend's? Or, uh, uh, she's a Jehovah Witness. That's about as close you can get, isn't it? <laughs> huh? Isn't that a Christian faith of some type? Yeah. What's the big difference between Christianity and Jehovah's? Well, they don't celebrate um, birthdays. Uh, that's right. It's really the cheap religion. <laughs> I've got to get into that Jehovah. Let me tell you something. When I have a family... We're going to be Jehovah's Witness twice a year, Christmas and birthdays. Jesus Christ, I wish there were some Jehovah's uh, for Valentine's Day. Do they have that in anniversaries? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, i got to check into that. <laughs> now, that's something I could get behind. Yeah. Well, if they're not going to celebrate Christmas and they're not going to celebrate birthdays, and they're, they're, they're not into celebration, some Jehovah call in and tell us whether they celebrate Valentine's Day in anniversaries, because uh, I'm really, I'm on board. If that's if that's the case, and Steve, when you say Christian, what does that even mean? Uh, Christianity. What does that mean? Um, Hold on, yeah. you know, just studying the Bible. Um, Stephen. Old Testament. Protestant, Catholic. Uh, it's Christianity is its own. Stephen. What lots of different Christian sects out there? Huh? Unitarian. What? Do you belong to a church? Yeah, uh, we were part Church of Christ. Okay. Hey, why do they even put the uh, of Christ in there? Is that kind of a no duh? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, is the uh, Christian Church of Satan? <laughs> nah, I believe in God. I'm not a Satanist. And... You're not. All right, good. Well, listen. Doesn't your uh, girlfriend believe in God too? Well, it's just you know I've had trouble with her dad. Well, you know he just doesn't approve of it. And... Jehovah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be some poor a-hole running around, like, uh, living in New Jersey, named uh, Joe Hova. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I mean... Then he gets involved with a court case. Well, You're a witness. He just doesn't... It's like he's not out to get me, but he just doesn't approve of... He wouldn't approve for dating, probably. Yeah. Yeah, period. Yeah, the Jehovah's are kind of weird about fun. I don't think they, uh, they like any of that. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean... I'm really interested in having a very long relationship with her, and I'm not willing to give her up. Just All right, because. we'll hang in there. We'll see what happens. Yeah, because, I mean, her dad's just really putting a strain on me and her. Well, obviously, she wants to have a relationship, so... Let's... Yeah, she wants it. Her mom doesn't mind. And it's not like you're some sort of, again, some sort of Satan-worshipping uh, you know, antisocial guy. You're yeah. a regular guy. You both, you both are on the same page. Yeah. Uh, I think it involves uh, God and Christ and, uh, you know, the devil and hell and all the... <laughs> All the important true stuff out in the world. Uh, are they in the Noah's Ark and uh, all that stuff, too? Mm hmm They are? You mentioned the Old Testament. Oh. You know what I love about religion? Mm. I, I was I was telling my girlfriend 
I think it was just last night. Here's why I can't get into religion. I mean, any real religion. This was a discussion about getting married in a church. Is that what this discussion oh, was about? That'll be the next one. <laughs> I can't get into uh, religion. I, my girlfriend's... Ceremonies. I can't stand them. My girlfriend's mom is uh, serious like born again. Yeah. I mean serious. Yeah. Although she has a thick Italian accent. Yeah. So it becomes comical. Yeah. It's like a Benny Hill sketch, you know, when she starts talking about rambling on about Christ. I mean, she is not, she's nutty with this stuff, right? Where's the dad? Uh, he's, uh, they got divorced a couple of years ago. He's way out of there. He's not, you know, he's sane. Yeah, he checked out. Yeah, um, I don't know if mom's insane, but she's certainly into the religion. Yeah. And to me, all, all you born agains are insane. <laughs> really. You really are. Right. Uh, check yourself out for a second. <laughs> so... We're talking the other day. You know, I get a few glasses of red wine in me. I get combative, you know. Yeah. So she was explaining to me about three months ago why Clinton was going to be impeached and uh, how it was going to work and, and because and chapter and verse and oh. Johns and uh, all this. Not, I mean, she was explaining why uh, and how, right? Predicting the future based on the Bible. Sure. No. Does it all the time. And uh, just like all the idiots, you know, they go up to the mountain uh, every four years, wait for something to happen, and they uh, come back, beg, see if they can get their job back at the uh, auto parts factory. So she was explaining to me why I was going to be impeached, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then, uh, lo and behold, a couple weeks ago, he wasn't impeached, right? Yeah. And I said to her, listen, okay, here's the deal. And you can't make these deals with uh, these uh, born-again nut jobs, but here's the deal. You say to him, okay. You're telling me you're going on for an hour. Uh, it's a sermon on the mountain about uh, why he's going to be impeached because it says it in the Bible and it's all it's it's crystal clear. Now, when we talk three months from now and he's not impeached, I want you to shut up. Or you'll agree. That Take it all back. Yeah. Right. Right. You're wrong, and the Bible's wrong. Right. Okay. And. Well, are you kidding? Yeah. You get another earful about whatever. He's just going to some other chapter and some other verse. And here's the whole thing about religion. Listen, I'd love to be on board with this. I really would. And I, I'm the same way with astrology and psychics. Find me one. Find me the guy. Find me the guy can take down to the track. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Find me the guy can see into the future. Oh, yeah, he can tell you about your dead grandparents. He can tell you about your upcoming nuptials. He can tell you about a job, change, and a move. But that sorry ass can't drag his pussy ass to the track and tell you who's going to come in. Now, let me tell you something. I can't see into the future, but if I could, calling a horse race is a hell of a lot easier than telling you where your a new job is going to relocate you in six months. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just put your money where your mouth is, all you frauds. You gonna call something? Go down and call it. And then I'm a believer. I'm right on board. I'm I'm the first guy in line. Give me that communion. Shove that wafer in my mouth. I want some. I'll double down. I'll bring my own cheese whiz. Jeez. But stop being wrong time and time and time again. And then when you're wrong, just admit you're wrong and move on. And let's Please. remember that the Psychic Friends Network went bankrupt, okay? Oh, oh did they really? Finally. Good. Oh, Jesus boy. Christ. Yeah. Bankrupt or just closed up shop after making you know a lot of money oh my god oh, oh. We don't know. out of business anyway. oh yeah here's why clinton wasn't impeached here's another chapter in the bible oh for christ's sake jesus would you people listen to yourselves for a change julie yes you're uh, 17 yes i am what's going on okay here's my situation um i am currently a virgin and there is a guy who i know is interested in me and I am interested in him, and neither of us want to have a relationship, but we want to have sex. Did you hear that caller we had earlier this evening that started that relationship like that? Yes. And what do you think? Um. She didn't want to have a relationship. She'd been in a horrible or abusive relationship. Oh, no, she's just going to have I sex. I haven't been in any kind of abusive but relationship. But she's just going to have sex. She was so clear she didn't want to have a relationship. She's just going to have sex with this guy. Oh, lo and behold... She really likes him. Hmm. What's going to prevent that from happening to you? I don't know, but see, I... It's going to happen. Listen, I'm, I, I know how female biology works. If a goat raped you and took your biology, you'd want to date the goat. I don't think so. I'm no, telling I th you. I think, I think women can can do surgical strikes with, like, the alpha males. Yeah. They, they get these... There's some guys that they can just go in with, and that's it. They're gone. Yeah. I wasn't even like, a delta male. <laughs> 
Epsilon. That was Epsilon. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how low does that Greek alphabet go? I'm sure it goes all the way through. Uh, the quasi mail? Uh, yeah. Quasi mail? Jesus Christ. Zephyr mail? What is the Z? What is the Z in the Greek? Greek? Zeta. The Zeta. Yeah, that'd be the Zeta mail. I like, uh, I held the alpha male's condoms. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Julie, how is it that you're a virgin and you wanna, you're want you attracted enough to this guy to have sex with him, but you're not interested in him? Um, Because he's not he's not a guy that I, I want to have a long-term relationship with, and, like, I've been wanting to, like, have sex for, like, a few months now. Why, why don't you want to have a long-term relationship with him? Or just a relationship? Why don't you want to have a relationship with him? Just because he's not... He's... He's not the kind of guy that, like, I, I picture, like... If he would have a relationship with you, wouldn't you have a relationship with him? Um, that's probably true. Yes, okay, right, so, true. all right. It's always right, everybody. Why don't you pick a guy that you can't have a relationship with so he doesn't hurt you? Okay. Okay? Jeez. I mean, it's okay if you want to do this. You God bless you, school. chicks. We're trying to talk yourself out of everything. No, I just, I just respect what you guys say very much, and what you say is probably what I am going. Well, to do well, don't, me. don't let Drew lead you too much. Okay. But, I'm, we're just saying, usually when there's a 17 year old virgin who's contemplating having sex with a guy, and says she wants no commitment, it's usually because the guy wants no commitment. Right. Hmm. Now, is that true in this situation? It doesn't have to be. Um, I think it is. Yeah, and, we're, and we're not even talking about commitment. We're just even a relationship. The guy just would, any guy, of course, would oblige you. Well, like, because when we, uh, he told a friend of mine that he was interested in me, and when, she, like, she got back to me, and we've been, like, going out on, like, a couple dates and everything, so we're, we're like, getting to know each other better. Um, yeah. You don't think this guy's into relationships? Uh, that's what I think, though. Okay. Yeah. Just be careful, Julie. Be very careful. Yeah, we just don't want to see you get your uh, hymen and heart broken <laughs> in one fell Simultaneous swoop. Simultaneously. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I'm so poetic. Thanks. Thanks, Drew. Cindy. Yeah? You're 15. Yeah. You're on Love Life. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe it. Oh, jeez. Hi. That's good. You know, most... Uh, most folks that come on the show just have that sort of uh, just bit into my quaalude kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> hey, you're on Loveline. Huh? Yeah. yeah, that one guy who called and he sounded like a hick. They're, uh, you guys are making fun of him. Completely unfazed by the radio. <laughs> All right, Cindy, what's going on with you? Oh, geez. I hope my cousins don't listen to this. But, um, okay, uh, Friday I went to my cousin's house and we all got just drunk off our asses. And um, they have three kids, and so they were all asleep. And we were, I've never watched, like, a hardcore porn or anything, you know, stuff like on Spice and stuff, but never, like, really, really bad. And so my cousin's husband um, turned one on, and I was like, oh, my God, that. Oh, sorry. And um, he, um. I, got it. I can't figure out what <laughs> what planet our callers are from. Shut up. I can't, can you, you they just spit the F word out on national radio. It just shows how comfortable they are with us, Adam. Okay. Let's speak yeah. in, the, in the vernacular of the, okay. the people. All right. Keep going. I'll, I'll explain my theory about that. Okay. Um, he got a little excited, and I decided to go to bed. And we were all sleeping on the same bed. And so I was on the edge, and I was just sleeping. Who's we're all? Um, my cousin, and she's a girl, and then my cousin's husband and me. And she was in between us. How old are they? Um... My cousin is 20, and oh, her husband is, like, 25, I think. Uh, they got three kids? Yeah. They're uh, six months, uh, two years, and three years. They should be taken away. Uh, yeah, I know. And you're... Oh, three kids. Oh, for Christ's mm -hmm. sake. And and you're over there. Is it just you over there? No. Um, It's all of us. He lives... With, they live with their... Um, yeah, I know. Is it... Is It's all oh. of us. <laughs> it's just you with that family. Yeah. Okay. And um, so you can explain later. I'm laying down, and he starts to mess with her because her hands like on my back, and she's like freaking out. Are they loaded? Yeah. Well, uh, alcohol. Uh huh. And oh, boy. and I took a couple of shots, but it was mixed with coke. Cocaine? Like, no. Pepsi. 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 Okay. Like Jesus Pepsi. True. No, I didn't. I've right. never done anything like that before. Um. So 
he like starts pushing on me and wondering like if I'm awake and he's like Cindy I'm like huh and so he like puts my hands all over her and I like got disgusted but I like couldn't move I was so stunned that he would do that and mm -hmm. he started like feeling my like boobs and I was like what what are you doing and he just kept on telling me like Shh, you know and then he like took off my pants and I'm like get off get off get off and, and your cousin like, is sitting right there hmm? and your cousin is sitting right there she's passed out mm. she, she was like she was down on the bed right. she was just mm. dead and he started um, sure they had the little kitty walkie talkie next yeah, to him sure, too sure right and um door wide open having he started performing oral sex on me mm -hmm. and I was just I was like, what What are you doing? And I tried to push him off. And, like, the next thing I knew, I was pulled down on the bed. And I was kind of laying in the middle of the bed. And he was on top of me. And his, his like, penis was in my mouth. Mm -hmm. And I was, like, Ugh. I started, like, coughing. And I pushed him off of me. I'm like, what are you trying to do? And he's like, well. Oh, hold on a second, <laughs> Anita. <laughs> I don't want to make light of this situation. I I understand when he's rubbing your shoulder, there could be some confusion there. But it, once you, <laughs> Cindy's like, well, the guy performs oral sex with me. I'm like, hey, what's going on? No, no, Nick, what are you doing? Nick, what are you doing? <laughs> the guy's got my, his penis in my mouth. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you trying to do? <laughs> At a uh, certain point, uh, now uh, he's been sodomizing me for an hour and 45 minutes, and he's filming it. At a certain point, you, you figure the guy's raping you, right, Cindy? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's so that's that's what he was doing. So but I don't know if he had sex with me because I'm a virgin, so uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's he, 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 all well, what that. Do you, mean you don't. Well, I don't. I don't remember. Forget. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, no. It's all sexual assault. It's all rape. Oh, it's all rape. Oh. Forcible sexual assault. Oh, the, and, and, and you're underage. It's just it is, uh, you got this guy is. He's a criminal. He's a criminal. Well, it, the next day I asked him, and he said he doesn't. He oh like, please, doesn't he is a criminal. <laughs> okay, I asked him what. I said, I said, do you even remember anything from last night? He said, well, we fell asleep watching a whole bunch of porn. And so I don't... He is I a criminal, he Cindy. This is alcoholic. a... He's an alcoholic. He's also a criminal. A very <sighs> disturbing. Let me tell you the, the, the thing that really makes him a criminal. Is he's got three goddamn kids. Yeah. Three kids. Those kids are dust. They're dust. I'm. He's going to... I swear to God, he's going to do something to at least two and a half of those three kids. I want to live in a society where your cousin gets her tubes tied, mandatory, by the state. <laughs> and anyone's got a problem with that can go talk to whoever those kids victimize. And where's the kids they kill? Or whoever's kids they rape? Whoever's kids uh, they run over when they're driving drunk 12 years from now? Jesus Christ. That's pathetic. Is this whole family a complete disaster? You know, um, I'm, I'm mixed. And my mom's white, so I was I was with her side of the family, and they're like all criminals. I mean, some of them are even like in the KKK. Yeah. So I, there's no family reunion for me. Uh, the, the the family's a disaster, Cindy. Um. <laughs> but uh, and this poor cousin of yours, and what's this guy do? Is he work around metal somehow? No, he doesn't do anything. They live with his mom, and they just. Don't do anything. Oh. How do you have, have three th kids? You have three kids. I know. I want to. I want to take them all away. Cause she, well, you shouldn't. But she's twenty years old, right? Yeah. What, what point do we not step in and say, uh, "Hey, you got two. You're nineteen. You're not working. That's enough. You can't. No more kids." <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm knee deep in in court battles, uh, trying to get the uh, kitchen over my over my goddamn garage right now with the government. I swear to God, I swear to God, I'm, I'm thousands of dollars just into trying to figure out whether I can put an addition over my garage. <laughs> and you're just uh, cranking out three kids, Cindy. This this whole thing is a disaster. Well, Do you I have anybody you can talk to? This guy's a criminal. Yeah. He's a rapist. <sighs> He's a rapist. He will destroy these three kids. You gotta call. I know. I um, call the Department of Social night, Services. All right. The next night, I called my um, well, kind of my boyfriend. He's he's really good friends with right. me. And, I don't um, trust him either. 
He was really sweet. I called him and I was like, what the hell? And he's like, you got to tell your mom. You got to tell your mom. And that's what my best friend said tonight. I was like, I can't. I can't. Well, you have social to services call on, your own. on behalf of the three kids. You have to. These three kids are going to be raised by this animal. An animal. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. This guy is so effed up that with his uh, six-month-old and his two-year-old and his three-year-old sleeping in the same house... And his, uh, his mom, or his dad, I'm sure they're not together. His wife in the same bed. His wife in the same bed is feeling up uh, his 15-year-old cousin-in-law. More than feeling Th up. This, uh, more, raping, sorry. His 15-year-old cousin-in-law. This guy's a criminal. He's a rapist with no boundaries. He's a rapist with no morals. <laughs> I mean, he's even worse than a rapist. I mean, please, Cindy, mm -hmm. you must do something. Do you hear me? Yeah. It will be, it'll forever be on your head what this guy is going to do to these kids. And whoever else he lures into his uh, little nest. Just well, um, that's not really the worst part because oh. my mom is uh, going to Chicago on a business trip and she... Um, is going to have my cousin come over and stay with me with her kids, and I don't know if she's going to bring her husband. Oh, please. And you got to tell your talk, mom. Talk to your mom. mom. Let you, me you talk to your mom. Where's your mom? Right now. She's sleeping. Go wake, wake her, her up. up. Oh, no. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Cindy? No. you got to talk tell your mom. to your, your mom. Your mom has to have a chance to do the parenting here. You, like, cannot, you don't understand, okay? My mom... No, listen, we understand. Yeah, no. She has to know. She has to know. Well, look look at the choice she's going to make here. Look what she's about. She's about to throw you into the lion's den. And you think she wants to do that with you? You got to do it, Cindy. I can't tell her. It's not that easy. I mean, I know. Uh, listen, I know it's not that easy. Nothing's that easy. What's the alternative? Hmm. You got to talk to somebody. Drew, go talk to her off the air. Okay. All right, hang on. Okay. All right. Jesus, we're talking. Now go talk to her off the air. You got to call the emergency room? Drew, I... I I've got to do it. Why? Because I just got something called Drew. Drew, we got this. It's more bigger than this? <laughs> Drew, I put you on... I, I, I cut you loose so you could call her. All right, can we listen in at least? Mm -hmm. We can't hear? What's wrong with that? Can we hear you call the emergency room? Come on, this is good radio. Drew, put your head in the corner. <laughs> Dr. Drew is calling the emergency room when he should be uh, talking to Cindy off the air. Uh, did you punch out? Punch out? Yeah, like when you're, you know, you're, you're, you're taking care of personal business. No, this is not personal business. I guarantee you. Well, who's calling? The emergency room. All right. Well, let's listen in. This will be entertaining. All right. This is Drew calling the emergency room, everybody. It's busy? Probably yeah. some nurse uh, uh, jabbering with a friend about went on on, uh, what went on on Melrose Place tonight. All right, let's listen. Drew talking to the emergency room. It's recording. <laughs> Drew, the one time you can come through and you fall apart. All right, well, hang up and talk to Cindy off the air. Well, obviously, they don't want to talk to you if they keep, if, if it's busy. Okay. We're going to take a break. I want to apologize for that uh, last five minutes of radio there. Drew, you talk to Cindy off the air. Yes. And we'll be back. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Pardon sexuality. Love life. Exclusively on Tucson's New York. 92.1 KFMA. The Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. Dr. Drew's in the other room. He just finished up with Cindy, who uh, had that horrific experience with her cousin-in-law. I hope he uh, set her straight. She's going to tell her mom. She's going to tell her mom? Yeah. yeah. She probably just said that to get off the air. No, a little bit interesting history there. Guess what? Uh, mom, uh, see, dad was uh, abusive. Uh, mom's boyfriend. Mom's boyfriend had raped her? Yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah, that's, but uh, she'd been able to tell mom this. 
She was able to tell yeah, mom this. And mom, of course, couldn't believe it and then turns her over to her cousin and her, <laughs> her cousin's husband yeah. to another rapist. Yeah. Guess what happened to mom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite a coincidence. Quite an amazing coincidence. I don't know Boy, why we, we always break things down to abuse, Adam. We we really, it. It's really just awful that we seem to distill things down to that every time. It's not fair, Drew. If we could only find some sort of pattern, perhaps we could uh, work on eradicating this horrible scourge. It's not a pattern. Everyone's different. Everyone's different. We're all unique individuals. Oh, okay. Sure. You take a 15-year-old girl from a healthy environment and uh, have her cousin get loaded, show porn movies to her, and then force his penis in her mouth, and she'll react the same way as one has been raped by, uh, by her stepdad. Right? Oh, of course. Absolutely. I mean, well, it's up to the individual. Yeah, it's, yeah it could be very fair. Yeah. Yeah, it's completely, completely, Adam. It's, it's random. Yeah, individual. No, it's random. random. It's a completely an individual thing. That's right. Mike? Polar bears. Mike? Yes? Mike, you're 18. Yeah. What's... Um, I don't know what, what you uh, have written there, but um, I'm 18. I moved out with my uh, 35-year-old boyfriend, uh, I think, about a year ago or so. Well, last, last June. And um, I'm kind of having second thoughts about it. I don't, I don't know if this is normal or if this is uh, something that I just kind of did because I'm kind of screwed up or what. Um, <laughs> well, what do you mean you screwed up? What's the matter with you? Well, um, hold on, I, I want to cast my vote. All right, yes. I, I've been living with my grandparents my entire life. My um, dad left when when, I, when my mom got got pregnant. My mom is in drug rehab, but has been uh, my entire life. Um, and I've kind of been. Stuck at my grandparents. I wanted to get out, you know, for 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 as long as I can remember. Uh -huh. And uh, I don't know if, if I just left um, and got out, just you know, just to get out. Yeah, yeah, just to get out. In other words, this guy might not be a great choice. Well, the thing is, now I'm like in love with him, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, what's I, he doing to you? Don't you know what he's doing to me? What's the problem? What's he doing to you? Well, I, I I just have the impression that he may be um, kind of screwing around uh, on the side. How did you get that impression? Yeah. How how did you get that impression? Oh, how? Mm -hmm. um, through uh, emails that I've I found, just kind of uh, things he's mentioned um, while while not uh, being a stocky. We kind of um, play around with with some some drugs now and then, mm -hmm. ju just you know to um, kind of. Experiment, what's, actually, you know? What's the question, Mike? Um, whether I should leave him or not, whether I should move back to my grandparents, whether or not this, this is a bad for me, whether I'm, I'm putting my my life on hold by, by being with him. Okay, we'll put you on hold because uh, the connection's bad, but you can uh, hear us. As a matter of fact, you can hang up. And still hear us on the radio. Listen to your radio, yeah. right? Yeah. Theoretically. Uh, I'm going with yes, 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 and yes. Yeah. The guy is uh, 35... I don't trust this guy. Do you trust this guy, no, Drew? No, he's cheating. And well, even if he's not cheating. He's 18 and 35. That's not good. I don't care whether it's heterosexual, homosexual. Uh, they've been going out with a, uh, for a year, so and, uh, it and, was, you know, 17 and 34. Yeah, and what a great uh, sort of target Mike is. He's just desperate to get out of the house, and this guy invites him out. You know, it's, come on. Mike, regroup. Get back to grandparents. Decide what you want. Pick somebody good for you. Oh, I mean, uh, somebody just wants to play. Listen, thing. everybody, if, if you can't handle kids, don't have them. But do you, do you see how it affects them? It, it's like uh, it's like being out in the battlefield naked. <laughs> it really is. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to equip people with the ability to make decisions and to understand who the dangerous people are or when they're being abused or when they're being violated. And when dad's gone and mom's in rehab... They never get that. And then they hook up with people, and they do horrible things to them, and they don't know they're, it's even being done to them. Well, of course, their, their, their object relations are with people who were abusive or absent. Right. Or, you know, those are what they expect from their partners. Right. <laughs> Sherry wrote, the uh, Celts went into the battle naked. It's nice. <laughs> Just like a little tidbit to take home tonight. It's funny that the uh, phone screen of Sherry's the smartest person on the show. In the building. In the building, thank you. Well, this is Westwood once. <laughs> That's not saying a whole lot. Jason. Yes. You're 26. I am 26. What's going on? Well, let's see. I've been uh, seeing a woman uh, for about four months. Uh, she's in the process of uh, getting divorced. And my biggest concern is for her two young boys, that uh, they can make this transition smoothly. 
uh, trying to figure out if there's anything that I or she can do uh, to make it easier on them. Tra trans transition into you being uh, like the stepfather? Well, eventually. Um, we're ready to take all the time that we need to. Uh, I just want to make sure that the boys are going to be okay. How old are the boys? Four. Uh, actually, he'll be five in May, and uh, the other one is 17 months. What's with their dad? Uh, what do you mean, what's with their dad? Why, why is there a divorce? Um, let's see. Uh, no abuse, no no drugs, no alcohol, none of that. Uh, they've, uh, I know that they've, actually they have a long-term relationship. They've been going on for about 12 years. Um, but basically it's just, uh, they've grown apart. Um, he's, my understanding is that he's been very inattentive. Uh, so you don't know, you don't know, Jason. You don't know and, well, I, I've got an idea. Uh, their youngest son had heart problems. And, uh, like from birth. And right after a couple of the initial surgeries, he left her for another woman and then came back. And ever since then, my impression is that they've really never been together as a loving married couple. Okay. Yeah. Well, she hasn't forgiven him for leaving him in that, that yeah, horrible and, and time. He couldn't, he couldn't handle what was going on. Right, right. Yeah. And he had a difficult time with that. And it's just... Uh, so he's still going to be in the boy's life. Yeah, yeah, that's the plan. I mean, I know that, that I, I will never be daddy. I never expect to be daddy. You know, I want to be the friend. I want to, you know, help to take care of them and raise them. Um, it's just right now, it's she's having a tough time because her main concern is her boys as well as it is. Well, the important be. thing is that, that the time is given to them with their father. Right. And that there's no ac you know, ill feelings let uh, be left over, that you guys settle your, your relationship such that there's stability there and that they can feel a togetherness and a concern for them and a presence for them at all times that's continuous and then you need to never leave <laughs> really oh well, that's a bitch that's the other thing you're in well and here's the thing too uh there are situations that are sort of inherently wrong or bad or tough on kids but kids are fairly resilient and as long as the people that are cast in the roles are good people they'll get over it I mean, it's not that big a deal. I mean, divorce, would mm -hmm. you shush up, Drew? It, it, shush and listen to me. Divorce is not good for kids. Right. But if it, if both parents are responsible and they put the kids' interests first, yeah. and then whoever they hook up with, be it stepmom or stepdad, turn out to be good people who have the kids' interests at heart as well, they'll be fine. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. it happens all the time, Except. and, and it, it's not going to destroy the kid's life. It's not good for them. It'd be better off if the folks stayed together. But they're certainly worse in this society. He sounds concerned. The biological dad sounds like he's fairly responsible. The mom sounds concerned. Yeah, it's good. And I think between the three of you being concerned and uh, theoretically whoever biological dad hooks up with in the future having some concern as well, the kids are going to be okay. So It's almost a catch-22. The fact that you called means they'll be all right. It's you're right. It's better than say Cindy's situation. Oh. And, and though, listen, uh, uh, getting your nuts caught in a Cuisinart is better than Cindy's situation. One of the situation. things those kids do, on some evidence, that they don't they they perceive families, they perceive units, and when those units are lost, they experience an intense loss. Yeah. So well, it's it's a bitch. Don't uh, don't get me wrong, but a lot of people have been through it, and if the step parents are decent, the folks are all right. You're just defending this because you've been through it. That's the deal. No, I don't like to defend my own family and their actions. You know me, Drew. Yeah. It's happened to uh, a lot of people. And, and a lot of problems in this country. All right, hold on a second, honey. Listen to me, Drew. Yeah. Um, that is true, but I would argue that, first off, still better than two bad parents to yes, stay together. I agree. And it's really ultimately boils down to the two parents and then who they select mm -hmm. in the future to be stepmom and stepdad. Yeah. And the kids kids can get over this stuff. They'd be better off if they were together, but they'll be fine. So quiet down. No, no, no. Oh, uh, yeah. Tanya? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> What's going on? Okay, as far as that's concerned, okay. Hello. Uh, I've been listening to you two for quite a while. And uh, I'm a mother of three, and I come from a divorced family. My mom and dad divorced when I was nine. And Drew, with I, the pen, please. <laughs> yeah? I was uh, acting out all my life until I finally got it together, and it clicked in my head that I am responsible for my behaviors no matter what has happened to me in my past. We've all been dealt a deck of cards. Uh, there's cards that are missing. There's cards that are bent. Uh, we all have crap in our lives. It depends. It's just... Uh, 
It's what we do with that that counts. And these children, like with Cindy's situation, if she can't handle that situation, how does she expect the kids to handle the situation? You know, we adults have got to stand up for these children. It's the children of this country that are going to uh, determine our future. Well, you sound like us now. I know, but Cindy is 15. She's <laughs> not an adult. Well, yes, that's true. However, it took me a long time also to come to this point. I've just recently came to this point. My husband and I, we, we struggle. We have our differences. Uh, however, we're committed to each other, to our kids. And especially these people who, uh, you know, addiction is a big thing, but uh, the mind is a powerful thing, and that can be overcome. Addictions? Uh, humans have, have done great things in the, over the years in the history and have overcome just miraculous things, and people just don't understand. I know. A handful of them have overcome <laughs> a handful of things, but the bulk of us have just sort of came to whatever it was that we didn't want to face up to. But uh, What's your point, Tanya? Uh, my point is... Is it succumbed or succumbed? Succumbed. Succumb? Succumb. All right, thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, Tanya. People need to be held accountable for their actions. They need to... Um, we, 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 to, to help people understand... People... That sort of falls on deaf ears when you say that. One of the ways you can get people to understand is by asking them not to blame other people or blame anything for things that happen to them. Right. Because that's what our, our that's what most Americans spend their time doing, is yeah. blaming their boss, blaming their parents. People do that. need to be held accountable, but when you're someone like Cindy, who got raped by her her Mom, mom's boyfriend. boyfriend and now raped again at 15, should we hold her accountable for uh, being raped when she was nine? And no, 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 not, not for anything that... Well, when do we hold Cindy accountable? When, in her future life, when she turns around, wants to uh, have a relationship, uh, she knows she should not have children out of wedlock. Yeah, but, but, but listen, we're holding... Let's say Cindy's 18 years old or 21 years old. Now we're going to hold her accountable. But we're holding somebody accountable who's been victimized her whole life. It's almost not fair to hold them accountable. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, how the hell, what is she, she doesn't know up from down. She was raped at nine and then, you know, raped again at 15 and then she'll get raped again at God knows what age. And then she'll be 21 or 19 or 18 and we're going to hold her accountable. It's like saying, you know, it's like uh, someone saying to me, listen, we're going to hold you accountable for uh, knowing algebra. Like I never took the class, but, but but the the tone of the culture should be that people are responsible for their actions. Yeah, I, and, and that she should understand that she would be held accountable. Not I that she uh, necessarily can. I I agree, yeah. but I I think just to say, hey, mind over matter, come on. Uh, that, that's unrealistic. That's very unrealistic when you are getting raped at uh, eight or nine years old. But she was also suggesting that addictions should be just overcome. Just just get over it. Right. That's not so... It doesn't work that... The brain doesn't work like that, I'm afraid. Wish okay. It would be great if it did. Then my job would be just about convincing people they need to stop doing drugs. And then my... Just convince them. Oh, hey. wait a minute. I don't do that. By the way, I've never treated an addict that wasn't begging, that didn't desperately want to stop using drugs. Well, then have strong enough mind. When we come back, we'll uh, talk to Angela's 25. She takes an issue with what you said to a previous caller rega regarding tube side. All right, we'll get into that with Angela after this. Oh, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. <laughs> On 92.1 KFMA. Hey, the love line. Blue and Drew in on life during the break there. When we left off, we were at least talking about Angela. Where did you learn that, by the way? Dennis Prager? What? Hold on a second. Your, your feelings about these things. I just made that one up. Okay. It was good, though, wasn't it? Was it was good, yeah. I was explaining to Drew that all religion is sort of based around birth and death, and that's why when you try to get into any one of those topics, everyone freaks out. That's why uh, we can't get the RU-486. Yeah, but you don't know maybe religion is focused on those issues because people freak out about those issues in general. And that's why when you get near them, people uh, get very strong feelings about them. we got to get some atheists in office and get this country cleaned up. Yeah, it doesn't mean people still won't have strong feelings about all that. No, nah, they won't. Believe me, it's a bunch of fanatics. Angela. Yes. You're 25. I'm 25. What's going on with you? You know, I was wondering, actually, did uh, 
did the topic that I'm actually taking issue with kind of spar that your little conversation that you were just probably yeah, yeah. yeah. Could have been. Yeah. What is what's the topic? Well, okay, you were talking to Cindy. And I completely sympathize with Cindy's situation. Uh, Cindy was actually, 15 and got raped by her... By um, her cousin's boyfriend. Cousin's. No, first her mom's boyfriend. Okay, well... And then her the, cousin-in-law. During, during the call, all the only information you had about Cindy was, you know, that what she has told you was that she had... She's married to a rapist, and she's 20 with three kids, and they have no job, and they live with their parents. Right. And... And I was I was following and I was agreeing and I was right along there with you until I heard, you know, you were really upset, Adam, and you were just, you know, impassioned in what you were saying. And what came out of your mouth was, she, your cousin needs to get her tubes tied. Right. And so I stop right there thinking, okay, are we blaming the woman? Are we blaming another victim? This woman was raised in a family, obviously, where she's been victimized, too. Otherwise, yes. she wouldn't be with the 25 year old guy who's getting a, a woman pregnant. Rapist. Yeah. Criminal. Yeah. Pardon mm. my French. Mm. Yeah, who on. is getting this woman... Hold on. Let me just give a quick speech to some of our listeners out there. You cannot say the S word or the F word on the radio. Have you ever turned on the TV or the radio and heard the F word or the S word? Well, I heard the D word on L.A. McBeal tonight. D yeah. word? I said dick. Yeah. Yeah, we say that. That, that word you can say. That is not the F or the S word, folks. <laughs> Those are the two you can't say. You are my teacher. Anyway, Angela, uh, so so the question, the point, keep going. The point basically was that I just found it really offensive and it was as if, and it's funny because you're talking about accountability and placing blame and all of that kind of thing when I just don't feel that, why why is it always that it's the woman's it sh responsibility? It shouldn't be, I agree with you, but yeah, let's look pragmatically at Let's just look pragmatically at that case for a second. Uh, well, should, but should, hold on, hold on a second. Angela, your only beef is that I said she should have her tubes tied instead of saying... She can't have more kids. Or they, no, the two of them shouldn't have more no, kids. No, 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 no. Instead of me saying that he vasectomy. should have a vasectomy. Yeah. Is that it? That's, yeah, yeah. That's your beef, right? My beef. Oh, okay. Well, listen, I'm, you're right. He should have a vasectomy. <laughs> Absolutely. He right. should have a vasectomy, but she should have her tubes tied, too. Well, not necessarily. I think she needs some therapy. I think she's got some problems herself. She has three kids. She's got three kids. That's plenty. Right. And All she right. came from the same family. That right. That's that's from. why she but, doesn't need any more but, kids. But the pragmatic issue is she has that's three not kids. That's necessarily true, though, Adam. You know? Oh, please. Please. Why, why should she stop her childbearing? Right. Because... Why? Because it's bitches like that are going to destroy this country. Bitches like that. What exactly do you mean by that? I, what do you mean? What do I mean by that? Well, explain. Elaborate. Don't just throw that kind of a statement out there and not back it up with Okay. Anything. All right. Don't back it up with anything. Right. I talk my ass off about this every night. You know, but you know what? Though? Listen. You quiet mean? down. Listen to me. <laughs> Let me explain something. Explain away, baby. All the evil in this planet is basically can be distilled down to unwanted kids growing up in a horrible environment. I cannot disagree with that. Okay. Uh -huh. She already has three, three that are being brought up Angela, by when her you, uh, and yeah. this monster. Let me tell you, I, I can't handle three kids. Okay? Three, three is way too many for her. Way too many. Drew has nine au pairs. Granted, four of them are there just for sex, but that still leaves five. She is destroying this planet. And he. And Together he. Together they are. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they should both be shot. No. Oh, no, yes. A woman who's been victimized, Please. who finds herself in a shitty situation, oh. it's such a natural thing for me. Go ahead. I get a little angry. So a woman who is in a victim, in a, in a situation where she is a victim. Right. Who perhaps she gets her kids taken away from her because of all of this crap. Right. Okay? Right. Crap, that was good. Huh, okay. They take the kids away. She goes through a traumatic period in her life. She gets some therapy. She recognizes the patterns. She learns to break the patterns. So who's to say that she's not going to be healthy enough to recognize that she was a bad no. parent? I agree. So, nor plan. Situation. Nor plan. Adam, right. Adam compromise? Uh, uh, no, listen. Stage that she might reach uh, some sort of clarity. But you know what? In my book, she squandered it already. Uh, you know what? I, I'm sorry. Not everybody gets I a second chance.
I have an almost nine-year-old son, let me tell you. I've been abused sexually. Didn't really. I know. We know because no, no one calls in and argues with us unless something happened to him. That was what we're, argue, what we're talking about. No, I, nobody's ever threatened to tie my tubes. I'm a woman and I have an issue with, with, excuse me. But you made vet treatment and you're doing okay, right? Yeah, I'm doing fine, but exactly. You, so who's to say that she can't do just fine herself? It, it, there, there's an outside chance I of that, but by the time she gets her crap together, well, I'm inspired by Angela though. Well, think, thank think, you very much. Yeah. And and I just I just want to say, Adam. Normally, you know what? I totally am on the same page with you. I think you guys make some awesome points, and I'm really glad that you're out there. And I agree that that yeah, you do have the outskirts of the bell curve, and. That's that's the audience that you're addressing, but I also do know that some of your listeners are educated, like yeah, yourself. Yeah. And Angela, I'm totally healthy. inspired by you. I, we, 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 I don't even think Angela and I are disagreeing. No, really. you're not. No, but but, not, but you're not really. A she, she, she she's a little sensitive to to to, to to the terminal uh, removal of childbearing capacity. Well, and, and, and blaming women. Anti women. Yeah, I, I agree. And listen, we all agree. We agree. Okay. Listen, I, I don't even want to this guy. Uh, first Adam, off, you, I do not like to be labeled as anti broad. Okay. I'll tell you <laughs> that right now. You agree, but listen, I, I am. You give me hope. I'm yes. totally inspired. And uh, God bless you. Keep going. I'm going to kill fun. myself, but Drew's uh, inspired. You, you should, you should form, write a book, form sort of some sort of organization with support for women that have been through this. And uh, let's let's start a grassroots attempt to get this. Thing. And, and listen, anyone who heard that call uh, heard me call this guy an animal uh, four hundred times. And and listen, here's what I would here's what I'd like. I would like. I, I'm literally I'm actually inspired by her. How many times have we had that? Never. Yeah. Listen to me. I would like to live in a society where the chick gets her tube tied, <laughs> her tubes tied, and we kill him. All right. And just kill him. Right. Yeah, come on, the guy's a varmint. He's a gopher. You know what I mean? He. Hey, he, Drew, can we kill him? Is that all right with you? I mean, he's raping uh, a 15-year-old. Uh, he's getting her drunk. He's showing her pornography. He's got three kids. He's uh, He's got his wife asleep on the sofa while he's raping this girl. Mm. Can we just put him down? Do we got to save everybody? Hey, why? Am, 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 am I? How? What am I, Mussolini? Because I want guys like that put down? No, you're Hitler. What, when this guy rapes your kid, uh, you're going to want him put down? No, I understand. All right, let's all put ourselves in that position then. Yeah, I understand. I think I'm just more empathetic. No, you're more, yeah, harshly realistic. Please. All right, we'll be back. Adam and Dr. Drew will be right back on Love Line. In just a minute or two. Call 1 800 Love 191. Programming glitch. Can we talk to you for a second? They are treading water in a sea of retarded. It's a programming glitch. Can we talk to you for a second? They are treading water in a sea of retarded sexuality. Love line. Exclusively on Tucson's The Rock. 92.1 KFMA. The uh, Love Line. Hey, your friend Molly tomorrow night. Ah, yes. From uh, VIP and then uh, our friend Rob Schneider will be in tomorrow. Thursday. Uh, sorry, Thursday. So, until next time, this is Adam Crowley for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Mommy! This is been Love Line. The views expressed on Love Line are not necessarily those of the staff, the management, or the sponsors of this radio station. And are probably not the views of Westwood One Entertainment. Love Line is produced by Ann Wilkins and Old. Now, please listen to this station longer. Tucson's new rock.